clones super minions oh here we go <laughs> coming with a queen charge hog rider attack opposite of the town hall feels <laughs> excessively risky if something goes wrong with this queen charge you can't pull this back it's almost impossible that you're able to pull this back he's doing the hogs with zero heal spells guys it's all about the queen charge in this one What's going on guys? Welcome back to Clash with Eric. Today we have AS Monster and Unicorns of Love in the LEGO International Cup. This tournament is in its ninth season now and is just started into week two. This is one of our first coverage of this new season and we'll see how the teams do today. So guys, if you're new here, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to use code Eric and let's dive right in as Kiri. From Unicorns of Love kicks us off with some, looks like, Zap Dragons here. It looks like he has a clone. He didn't go with a lot of lightning here. He went with just enough to go funnel out the bottom quarter. And it looks like he went for a sweeper in the middle of the base as well. So now the dragons are coming from the right quarter there. No sweeper to fight. And the blimp will travel through unimpeded. It has a clone. I don't know where he's going to use this clone though. I wonder where he's going to use a clone. Because we don't see a clone used a lot in really much of Clash of Clans Esports in general, but he drops in clone super minions. Oh, here we go. <laughs> clone super minion drop. Let's go, Curry. Starting off with something really interesting. I don't know if it'll work though. Let's see. He's got that in the queen down. Look at that expo pinged away a little bit there, but that uh, clone minion is going to die before it takes it. A lot of dragons up top though as he fights off the hound and he still has his road champion that he hasn't deployed yet. He still has two freezes. The minions have started to fade and are gone now. He's got a minion working the bottom corner. It's a really good spot for a minion. Look at the value that this minion down below is going to get. They can pick up the mortar and the cannon. That's, that's two defenses. That's really good. That'll help the road champion out on the backside. Now, he would have really liked to get this ground expo out of the way there because his road champion is going to get hit really hard by it. But he's got the freezes. He can lock down the air defense. And he can lock down that single inferno as necessary. But he just lets the inferno kill the dragon and he saves the freezes to protect the royal champion seems like the royal champion is the more valuable troop to defend here just really needs to get this air defense down before the dragons get hit if he can get the air defense before the dragons get hit he's in a really good spot the dragon sweep in they will take out the arch out the rc pops her ability and she will work her way into the last couple defenses here once that wizard tower goes down there's nothing left the queen breaks the wall she's on her way in as well it's a triple to open up here from unicorns of love i love the creative use of the the super minions with clone in the blimp there. I, I feel like we need to quickly, before we dive into this attack, just take a look back at exactly what those minions did and what kind of resources he used to pair with them because that was kind of cool. I kind of like that. But there we go. Easy day, triple. Beauty Quartz of Love. That's it. So blimp got protected by the ward ability. Hit a couple of mines on the way through. He manually opened it here, I noticed, during the attack here. He manually opened it. He made it invisible. The super minions long range makes so they don't have to move, so they don't really step out of the invisibility. That's honestly pretty safe. And he ranged it up. And he cloned it. They do a lot of damage. It's, it's significantly safer than the invisibility with the super wizards, right? Lots less risky. Moon, live from Monster here. We got some Inferno Dragon Rider coming in for the next one. Our dragons will come in with the Queen with a little bit of Skeletal Spell giving her protection. Although she didn't really need that Skeletal Spell right there. She honestly had her Unicorn right there that could have topped her off through that damage. And now that Ground Expo is going to lock onto her. And I guess the Bloons will take it out quickly. That's okay. She'll, she'll be fine over there. He doesn't wall break her in though. He puts the king on the outside of the base and the queen will continue working around that scatter shot there. But the Inferno Dragons and the Dragon Riders are on the way to it. So they'll take it down. Let's see. Enemy heroes here. Let's make sure the Dragon Riders are not going to get targeted by the enemy queen or anything like that. He's dropping in more skeleton spells around where the king and the queen are working their way in to keep them protected. But one comes out in the middle to help him get through the enemy queen. That's really the biggest threat there to these troops is the enemy heroes so if you lock down the enemy heroes whether it's the king or the queen or the rc 
All extremely useful to lock them down with the skeletal spell so they're not pinging away. Also the Grand Warden. Really all of them, if you get the scatter shots or something like that distracted at the same time, all the better here. But he'll freeze up the scatter shot on the right side as the RC sweeps in on the left. And this looks absolutely crushed. Moon. <laughs> that was clean, dude. Nice attack. All right. Swag Queen ability. Honestly, Swag RC ability too. <laughs> he just used it at the end there. Basically is clean up. And another base is absolutely crushed. Let's go. Tahara coming in with a Queen's Charge Dragon Rider attack here. Attack is currently the most used attack throughout the pro community in Clash of Clans esports right now. So it's no wonder that they're bringing it out here. Let's see if we can get it done as he charges the Queen in. Will wall break a second time to go into the scatter shot, barely hanging on to his ability right there, but he'll engage a partial CC here as a couple archers pull out. Maybe dragon work on the outside, and the queen will continue to work her way in. He's got a super wall breaker down the line there, and he funneled out by the corner of the town hall, so the king can punch in there and go take the town hall, but he needs to get the CC pulled and dealt with with the queen, so it's not blocking access for the king to go snipe that off. The poison up the super minions. And all right, did that CC no big deal right there? Alright, looking good, looking good. What from here though? I suppose you would charge in the dragon riders through the bottom corner here so you could engage the enemy royal champion quicker. If you get the enemy royal champion down, then You'll, you'll use the headhunters to get her in easier, right? But he wall breaks the queen to go north on the base here. And that'll give her access to that multi-inferno eventually, but it'll take her a little bit of time. Really needs to have the ward ability to protect the headhunters to go in through the royal champion. That's why he has to really start in that bottom corner, even though it might seem like it'd be better value to go after the eagle artillery a little bit earlier. But it actually isn't. It's actually very, very important that we get that RC down so she doesn't pick off all these Dragon Riders. He's got a nice push going through right now. He needs to get his way through to the scatter shot here. But a lot of these Inferno or these uh, Dragon Riders, I mean, are breaking off to the middle of the base, which we need to get that too. So he'll rage up and then Warden, as he works his way through that area, the Queen trying to go through the wall, but she finally gives up on that wall, turns back north up to the multi Inferno, but. She started to go to that multi-inferno initially, but she eventually turned her way backwards, lost her healers somehow. I looked away for a second and all the healers are gone. And now he's in trouble. I don't I don't think he's gonna make it. It's gonna be a defense here. That was looking really good until it wasn't. And now it's gone. And everything's dead. It's a defense. Luxy holds strong on this one. He must have got the healers targeted by the inferno or something there, right? I I honestly wasn't watching up there. I was watching what the Dragon Riders were doing down below. I didn't see that the healers were dying, but uh, apparently that's going to stop this attack in his tracks. If they can make up for the next one. Uh, uh, Monster has an opportunity to get ahead now. Lays live. Here we go. Running with a P.E.K.K.A. Smash. Now, these guys are so good to P.E.K.K.A. Smash. Now, this is something interesting here. He's got the Earthquake. When we have the Town Hall, and we want to warden walk it, but it's surrounded by battle builders. You really got to bring in that earthquake. You got to bring in that earthquake to not only help you take the town hall down faster, but also it'll make so that all the battle builders will be forced to repair their own huts and keep them off of the town hall for a little bit. And make so that the warden can actually take it down. Otherwise, he'd be fighting it for another like 30 seconds or something like that. But he's got to finish his warden walk in the first minute. He'll rage up. There's the quake. And all the battle builders are on the town hall. He still got it down. He should have put the quake first. <laughs> uh, almost got that inferno. What's that? How did that inferno get low health? I don't know, but that inferno needs to go down. There's uh, nothing they can chain to it right now. Like one blue needs to split off over to it right now. How did that? Oh, there's a there's a couple invincible blues going to it right now. That'll work. That'll get that inferno down. They hit the tornado trap over there as the peck is continue searching in the middle of base there. But he does. He's got to get this multi inferno down. He can't reach it. How is he gonna get that? He's gonna burn up all of his super wizards right here. That multi inferno doing some work here with the RC. 
trying to push away into it, but she's going to get distracted in the Tesla farm off to the right. The hogs out of the siege barracks will surge in there. They will take care of it. They could lose too much here. He's still got some super wizards alive. He's got the pet kiss alive. The healers are intact. The hogs take the multi. The RSC alive on the right side. Takes down the Grand Warden. And he still has a queen ability. It's crushed. <laughs> Why am I even doubting them? Lay. Coming in strong. Again. Like always. Because they're monsters. And he can swag his RC ability to hit every single one of those collectors and collapse his way into storage. That was a nice RC ability, right? Just, uh... I get to take out four collectors. That's how I want to do my farming from now on. I'm just going to bring the RC. I'll take out all the defenses when I'm collector sniping. And I'll just hold on to it until I'm ready to hit a couple collectors with it. That's how I want to farm. Lay. OP. Chichin. Live against GYY. We got more P.E.K.K.A. Smash? Can you even call this a P.E.K.K.A. Smash? It's got one P.E.K.K.A. But it's the general... Lineup that we would see for a Pekka Smash. He's got an Earthquake. He brought one random Earthquake. What is he up to on this one here? He'll ward and walk out the scatter shot. Run into a couple Teslas on his push in, but that's okay. You can work with that. I wonder what he's gonna use this Earthquake for. Honestly, I'm I'm a bit curious. He's got one super wall breaker and a log launcher. A log launcher, huh? Okay, okay. In that case, I have a feeling he's going to go north with his Warden and enter through the King of the Queen. If he uses the Earthquake, then maybe he can hit one of the structures that is already damaged up by the Log Launcher and he can take out additional things that he wouldn't be able to get otherwise. He is trying to pull his Warden back up here, but the Warden is not coming with the rest of the group here. Walk is continuing and is veering away from the main group here further and further. A bit of a problem. Maybe he can still keep things alive as they go through the core. He's got the log launcher hitting the multi inferno in the middle of the base. The RC comes in on the lesson. Good thing he has lots of golems here. He'll freeze up the multi inferno to protect the super wizards. Yeti's come out of the siege barracks. The queen rounds the corner there. She'll go get the multi inferno down, but the CC may distract her for a little bit of time. He does end up breaking the wall there, and all of his super wizards die to a giant bomb inside of that inferno compartment. The warden finally joins in with the queen. Hasn't used the ability, but he'll pop in now. He's still trying to get to this town hall. He's got the Yetis going through the wall right now. The healers have picked up onto the Yetis. The warden has now crossed over to join in with the king. And the Yetis and the Queen will continue on to the Town Hall on their own. He does lose out to the scatter shot on the outside as it kills the Witches, but the P.E.K.K.A. try to step inside the minimum range of it. Is going to die to the cannon, or is it going to get it down over there? Okay, he does get the Town Hall down, and the Golems take down the scatter shot with their death damage over on the left side. Oh, come on, Chichen. You got this, buddy. It's not going his way, but he's doing all right. He's doing all right. The healers are still alive. The King is still alive with his ability... Pops it right there to carry through. We can get out of the poison. Get out of the poison. Pick up those healers. The healers are okay. The healers are alive. He's got 30 seconds. But he missed the battle builder. It's a time fail at best. Oh, rip. <laughs> yeah, he's not even get the queen out of that compartment in time. <laughs> I'm honestly surprised that he made it as far as he did considering he never got the warden to join with the group there until way too late luckily he never had to use his ward ability during that but 92 percent for chichen that was entertaining at a minimum <laughs> oh what can you do flexi we got inferno dragon riders again just send in a couple balloons here and then the blimp, the blimp will actually end up. Ooh, I was gonna say it would take the, it would use his crash damage to get down the air defense, but no, the tornado trap pulls it away. Giant bomb, but he's got a whole bunch of regular goblins filtering out of there before the sneaky goblins come out. And make sure that he can wait out the tornado trap there, clear all the traps with the regular goblins, and he gets the CC pull, so we can draw the CC over to the right side and fight it with his queen in complete safety over here while forming the funnel. And he can get ready to send the Inferno Dragons and the Dragon Riders right through this multi. But this air defense is a little bit of a problem there. He definitely 
was counting on the air defense going down to the blimp and he doesn't get it and it's gonna put a lot of damage on his flank here he's gonna have to find a way to overcome that he's got a couple blues that he hasn't deployed yet he drops them in now they'll go in there and finish it off that works that'll fix it nice adjustment for our dragons continue to push their way through the base here ward ability with a rage and a couple skeletal spells to get him through the enemy queen raw champion and enemy single inferno enemy single inferno. All, all these single infernos are enemies in my opinion but he's also got the king anchored down as well the king the queen the rc all anchored down there by the skeletal spells is probably one of the most important part of how to use your skeletal spells during an attack like this you got to make sure that you keep those heroes under control because they pick off more dragons than anything else and you have to be super super careful around them but the rc swinging on the left side we'll get out the scatter shot and we'll pop her ability into the test farm if she wants to it's a giant bomb she'll go to ability right there takes out the majority of the test farm but the king's gonna swoop in right at the perfect time and finish it off rc's gonna end up dying out here before getting out of the scatter shot Ooh, this might not go through is this gonna be a miss from monster he's still got one inferno dragon the queen has a freeze and her ability and has her unicorn intact the king finds safety on the outside of the base, but he's not going to provide much more tanking. He's looking through an expo, and he still has to circle all the way up to the top of the base to go after the wizard tower and the builder huts here, which makes me have little hope for the chances that this goes through. He will be able to pop his ability, though, and he'll be able to get through this wall quickly and get to the scatter shot and the expo, but that's about as far as he's going to get here. If he can even get those down. Loses the queen's healer. And he'll get out of it with a 95%. Nice attempt here from Fluxy. Ain't gonna happen on that one, though. Close to. Still high percentage. Still gonna be 95 compared to a 92 and an 85. So, percentage advantage and a star advantage is still in there for Monster. Barbaric's always just chilling. He's like, we'll bring Barbaric out for this one. He's a good guy. I think he's right down here. I was like, what's up, buddy? All right, let's dive into Kamakun for the next one here. We got a Skelly Donut Lalo. As he drops in the invisibility, the rage, and the skeleton spells to take out the CC, but the scatter shot. Uh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's not good. <laughs> that was a really low value <laughs> skelly donut. Uh-oh. <laughs> How many spells was that? A rage? At least two skeleton spells. At least two invisibility spells. And the quake. So, six spell space worth or spell slots worth of spells there at a minimum yeah that's a bit of a problem that's that's a big problem uh well at least he can reach the town hall without without uh engaging the cc before he does so he was able to take it down there without the cc stopping him from getting it the drop in the road champion but the road champion that died of the headhunters uh oh can she even get her shield off? Nope. She can't even get her shield off with the headhunters and super minions hitting her. It slows down the, the sneaky... Or the uh, headhunters, I mean, slow down her strike so much that she can't even throw her shield. Oh, no. And he doesn't have a poison either. Is the ward going to die too? Oh, no. Oh, he gets it. He gets it down. Oh. Oh. Woo. Okay. <laughs> Um I don't know what to say about this attack. <laughs> this is, he's so screwed. He's so screwed. He'll get whatever he can out of it, but I mean when you leave out the multi and the CC that you're supposed to deal with and it kills your queen and your RC value, and now the multi is ripping his balloons apart. And almost took out his warden. That was a, that was supposed to be a big trade-off there for those spells and he got nothing he got nothing and he'll get out of this into the 70s here but that's a big miss right there he what happened why didn't he why didn't the skeleton spell take down the cc 
He's probably just as baffled as I am, right? Also didn't get the Inferno. Like, what the heck's going on there? You know what it probably was? The Battle Bills probably saved it. If you Quake as your first thing there to get the Battle Builders to go repair something other than these buildings here, you're going to have a much better chance of taking them down. Let's quickly watch that back and see what the heck happened with that Skelly Donut. Because... Yeah, he... Like, if you're doing this, you gotta quake first. You gotta quake so that all these other buildings have to go get repaired. So the battle builders all went to work here, saving the Inferno, saving the CC. And then he also took a scattershot hit there as he had a little bit of a miss with uh, some of these invisibility there. That's the, side, that's the problem with side-by-side -side invisibilities is some of the skeletons leak out and then the scatter shots can fire on it. So that was definitely a misjudgment on thinking that he could do a skelly donut on that base there and hit both of those. If you got to do like two that are side are like across from each other and you can squeeze invisibility in between them, then you can get a better angle to protect all the skeletons to prevent that fire. But if you're doing side by side, there's going to be some that leak out and that's what happened there and it's going to wreck that attack. We're into the next one here though. We got Sue coming in from Monster. The Queen will go into the Town Hall and... The how much value you can get out of this queen charge before he goes into the dragon right it looks like the queen is not going into the town hall compartment she's gonna wrap around it got a partial cc pull and he'll try to push his way to the scatter shot here little sneaky goblins and a balloon coming down to go take some of the damage off the queen here also searching for black mines and clearing the funnel all simultaneously he's got the cc pulled now poison that up he's got a whole bunch of archers killing out right now and Probably some headhunters down behind, or a witch. There's a witch in there. The witch will get drawn into the poison. The witch is meant to stall up dragon attacks here, but uh, Queen Charge is going to be able to quickly and easily move through that. Although the queen did not get the witch down with the poison because all the archers spacing out the poison. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, she's spawning again. Does he get her? Okay, he got her before she spawned again. Okay. <laughs> definitely stalled her up for a while. That's okay, though. That's that's why they put all the archers in front of the witch there, is to make so that the poison wears off. That worked out by design. And we'll see if Sue can get in here and uh, get the scatter down. And where is he going to go from there? Because if he... Oh, there comes the stone slammer. Stone slammer comes in from the right, going after the air defense. Some unnecessary fire on that scatter shot, though, as that uh, air defense pings away. But the queen... Will actually end up getting access out of the base here. He's got the jump spell, but the queen leaving the base here because of the stone slammer open up all the walls could be a potential issue. He puts the jump back and he tries to cut off the path to push the queen back in the base there. A jump will carry her into the core. That's actually going to work out really nice there. She can swing to the outside. She can come back under the veil of the dragon rod is going over her head, but he needs to get the enemy road champion down. He's got the king pulled out of the way there as he gets the enemy queen down with a couple headhunters. The headhunters continue on forward. They'll work their way in and get this this road champion down while the dragon riders are protected by the ward ability. The RC sweeping under as well. Joins in with the queen. Gets her shield off to hit this scatter shot up ahead and the queen will tank the scatter shot while her healers keep her topped off, but he makes it invisible. It feels like a mistake. <laughs> That's okay. He's, uh, he's doing just fine. He's doing just fine. He's got tons of dragon riders left. They'll take the air defense down. Bloon comes down to the backside, catches a black mine, and he'll work his way into the last couple defenses. It's another triple. Monster is ridiculous. Absolutely insane. Wow. <laughs> this team always amazes me. They're so ridiculously good. If you don't know who Monster is, they were previously previously niching dance. Unicorns of Love! Live with Wado. Here we go. We got Super Witches and Lightning for this one. You'll zap Quake, the Battle Builders, and the Inferno here. The Warden Walk will get the advantage of all that. All the structures in the area there weakened up by the Lightning and the Quake, which will move him along very quickly here. I really like this setup. Only thing they could have made it sweeter is if a couple Teslas pop. There's the Teslas. <laughs> right on cue. All right. Um, just needs the Queen to grab at that Arch Tower and he's good. Drops the Archer over in the corner there. On the top corner as well. And here comes the Super Witches. All right. Simple, simple approach here. I like it, but he's 
not going directly to the town hall. He did the water walk on the town hall compartment, but he will go into the scatter shot here and he can jump to the multi inferno and then jump again on the queen pad to go to the back side of the base here. Now, he'll have to get the king out and pass him here so his royal champion will be freed up to go along the bottom corner here. And uh, no king can block the. Uh, we don't want the king to block the royal champion's access to the eagle artillery here. But we can't deploy the eagle artillery until the blimp safely gets to town hall. So this blimp sailing through. He can pop the ward ability right about now. Perfect. All right. That's also protecting through the enemy heroes. The king doing a good job on the bottom side here, but he can't deploy the road champion just yet. The witches are kind of split between going outside and inside of the base there. He does successfully land on the town hall. Now he can deploy his road champion from the bottom, and she does. She'll come in and get the, the eagle artillery down. With no enemy heroes to contend with, she'll have a pretty dominant reign over that area of the base. He's got a... What is this? Uh, the enemy queen. I thought the enemy queen was down already, but I guess not. She'll lock onto a... Big boy, though, and not onto a witch, so that works out nice. The witches are now respawning. He's got two witches on the outside, two on the inside. In a really, really strong position here as he continues to march his way forward into this base. Archers on the backside working on that cleanup. I want to time fail this. He drops in one additional archer to go after that builder hut, the, the master builder hut. As it got left behind, that was a really nice play there with that archer. As the big boy was eventually going to get to it, but maybe get that big boy to do something useful instead of attack a wall over on the left side. All right, well, he's got the entire corner cleared here. The wizards sprinkle in on the corner, and the RC, queen, and witches will collapse in the last couple defenses here. It's absolutely crushed here. Beautiful attack here from Wado. Really, really like this one here with the zap super witches. Clean. Brings it down, but is it enough? Is it enough? They're going to have to force a one star for a monster if they want to make a comeback in this war and win this round of the Lego International Cup. DYY! Coming in with a Queen Charge Hog Rider attack here. Now, coming with a Queen Charge Hog Rider attack opposite of the Town Hall, when all you needed is a two star to win the war feels <laughs> excessively risky. Excessively risky. If something goes wrong with this Queen Charge, you can't pull this back. It's almost impossible that you're able to pull this back. But he does have a Log Launcher here. He'll get the queen to engage the king here and then she'll round the corner and go to the lab and go into the wall break here now he's got that log launcher and the log launcher is gonna have to cross the entire base here and open up access for the queen to go all the way through and very likely she is in charge of getting that town hall down he'll put the king in to go get the artillery king will take the first eagle strikes there and he'll work his way and he definitely does not want that eagle artillery beating on his queen Usually if this Queen Charge is going to go down, it's because she's taking Eagle Strikes to her healers or to herself at a really inopportune time. He drops in the Log Launcher now. His King is not getting the Eagle Artillery down, though. He's trying to go after the Road Champion. Makes the RC invisible. The King turns around and gets off of it. That was clutch as hell right there. The King will drop that Eagle Artillery. The Queen takes a shot, but she survives it. Goes to ability. Okay, okay, he can work with that. He can work with that. Rage up the queen again. Continue to drive into the base here, but no ability. He's got another invisibility, and he's got two freezes and another rage here to drive this queen in. He's doing the hogs with zero heal spells, guys. It's all about the queen charge in this one. Going all the way through the base here, and this is for the win if he locks this town hall down. Queen doesn't have her ability. Come on, Queen. Hang in there. She's under a lot of damage. She's not passing directly to it. She's going to go to the RC first. Uh oh, oh, get the RC out of the way. Get the RC out of the way. The hogs come in. They'll distract the RC. Head on it down. Warden ability to the bomb tower and the scatter shot. Big test of farming the Queen. Drops the town hall and Monster takes the win. But can he finish it? He gets inside the middle range of the scatter shot. The Queen goes down. The healers transfer over. Healers are safe. Healers are safe. RC pushing through. No heals for the hogs. Just the healers transferring over. He's got 30 seconds. Can he close it? Oh, I can't believe that he took this risk here on the final attack of the war when all they needed was a two star and he had no backup plan for this queen. If anything went wrong, there was very unlikely that he's able to, he was going to be able to pull it back, but he's actually looking pretty good here to close it out. He's got 10 seconds though, and I don't think it's going to be enough time here to finish off the rest of the buildings. He's collapsing as quickly as he can, but it's not going to be enough here. Leave a couple up. It's going to be 
a time fail here from GYY. What a monster playing for monster and is a crazy attack. And I feel like a completely unnecessary risk at the very end there, but a 13 to 12 victory for monster. We'll close out this round of the legal international cup and week two will commence with other teams there, but uh, we'll see which ones we can catch. If you guys are new to the channel here, make sure that like button, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to use code Eric and we'll see you in the next one.